for the students here, we are also commissioners. We are given basically subcommittee positions. We sit on different, as individuals, sit on different boards of the county. One of mine was, well, not just in the county, mine was NECAP organization, which is located in Hiawatha. Uh, they, this is totally new to me, I never dealt with them at all, but they themselves are a $7 million plus a year entity doing with uh, Head Start, uh, prenatal uh, women's, predominantly women's low income uh, <coughs> issues, uh, early reading and all of these <coughs> issues, they are funded through block grants from the federal government. Uh, I was basically kind of went just on the training mission, my first my first out outage there. We uh, everything seems to be running fine. The meeting the staff, I mean it's it's quite eye opening there to suddenly go to a meeting like this and, and uh, see what's out there. I really don't have anything really new to report. I mean, as far as just, you know, my first time there, I don't know anything new. So, okay. I don't know if we've had any of the time. Uh, are they meeting quarterly? So they're typically? Uh, every other month. Yeah, five months back. Okay. And is that, who's, who's on the, you know, who, who's on the overall board? I mean, are you familiar with anybody that is? I don't know if I have any of that here. Uh, I know a commissioner from, uh, Jackson County, and that's the only one I knew, but there's 14 on board, okay. and they cover 16 counties. They have been expanded now to 16 counties. They go further out to Mankato, and, Mason, and I was reading some of the history, and I didn't realize that that organization was first started here in the Atchison County Courthouse. It was up on the third floor back in 1965. So. Then it moved to Holton, I believe, for a while, and then now it's, it's in high wall. So it's grown and expanded coverage over the years. So it's very interesting. Bill, do you have any I had a project of certain meeting two weeks ago. And like Eric, I'm starting to do this in my second meeting. Uh, the former board uh, hired a new director, and I think she's getting things straightened out. Uh, the finances look in real good shape. Uh, they're getting a new JCAP bus this fall. That's funded by KDOT grant. And project concern is they they deliver meals to the elderly. And that's their main uh, objective. Yeah, that's it. Like uh, Commissioner Mool had alluded to, we, we all sit on different uh, uh, boards, committees throughout our community. And uh, part of the reason is, is that um, uh, the Commission um, funds different organizations, um, either through um, direct tax levies, um, so like uh, Project CERN, um, the, 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 that's get too deep. The state government, Kansas State government um, uh, has certain laws or statutes that allow certain um, Groups or entities to be to, to direct tax levies. So when you pay your property taxes, you come to the courthouse um, and pay your property taxes. Uh, of course, that property tax, uh, that dollar goes to not only Ashton County government, but uh, it also goes to if you're living within a city or a watershed district or or a township district or um, some of these other um, entities. Um, so of course, your tax dollars will go to other entities like Project and Service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and your tax entities are, are schools, uh, you got libraries, watershed districts, township districts, cemetery districts, county government, city government. And there's, there's multiple uh, school districts within Nashville County. We have, obviously, um, two, uh, two public school districts, but there are also other school districts that border perimeter Nashville County, so the taxing districts kind of cover in. So I think there's, Linda, correct me if I'm wrong, is there like 66 taxing? Yeah, there's quite a few in the uh, Nashville County. I think it's. Yeah, it seems like there's about 60, 66 total taxing districts in Nashville County. So it gets somewhat complicated, so it takes a lot of diligence and, and patience to make sure that those tax dollars get, get distributed. So, but um, but all of us sit on, on different boards and, and functions. Um, um, I, I also sit on the, the 
Chamber, Chamber of Commerce Board, um, and uh, also on, on the Project Concern Board as well. And uh, you know, we all do different functions. I know Eric sits on the Multi County Health Board. So as commissioners, we're also local uh, board, local health, and a lot of people don't realize. So something, uh, some major disaster or, or something, some big health outbreak, uh, we're responsible for health decisions uh, for uh, for citizens in Ashton County. Anyway, um, it's kind of about us. Um, so let's go on to our next uh, agenda. We have uh, reports from uh, like the officials of the department heads. Yeah, so it looks like we have our county lake personnel. Ashton County has the National County Lake in the northwest corner of the, of the county. If you have a tour to get, we've got our uh, caretakers, Gail and Dennis Statler here.
cost him eight hundred dollars to the activity service. That might have been the year before you came. I'm not sure. And he 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 told me he said he was in it wrong. He learned his lesson, you know. Yeah, he realized then what it was took to fix to keep the lake out and everything. And but they're just tearing the heck out. He was telling everybody else in, in school when he was still to his high school students not to be doing it and stuff. Well, every so often after they graduate and move on, then we have another group come in and start doing it. Because we patrol that on weekends till about 2 o'clock in the morning. Pat, there's sort of got obviously these pictures of the little bit. That's all I'm going to have. They're, they, 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 they're uh, taking down uh, license plate numbers. Of, uh, they first they reported as criminally owned property. So. I know you're familiar with that. Yeah, we tried, but the FD wouldn't do anything. On the last time he said he'd have it on camera. 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 He said he'd have and on this one road, if it does, when it floods, like we have storms that knocks it over, there's no way people can get out because it floods on that one campus side and then when you shut the gate, they can't get out that way. They, you know, if we warn them. But it needs to be dropped. Um, we got, and then there's one out there, so I'm going to talk to Matt to get a dozer out there and get out. And they're good sized trees. I had some farmers out there cut some trees. They signed a, you know, release really? really form to cut some trees, and they was all hollow trees. Okay. They got ants, they wood ants that really they're tear up ants. the trees bad. So, like I say, we got quite a few. I'm going to talk to Matt. And this one farmer said he would cut down the one right by the road, so that would save the road crew. And he's done a lot, so there would be no problem. Yeah, if they're a nuisance or safety hazard, then you should probably get those removed. Yeah, like I say, yeah, they're just getting pretty bad out there. The rats won't come out. He said when he has some time, do the one by that shelter house by the road. It's, it's pretty rotten. So. Yeah. 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 Do you have quite a bit of ATV traffic out there? Or yeah. yeah. Do they have they been abiding pretty well or no? Yeah. Um, the first year was not here, but um, after the third year, we got to calm down pretty good. They still have. They like to fly around. They like to hog the roads. They'll get off the roads. We've seen tracks where they've gotten off the roads. We had one that was flying through there, and his family was rich, and they thought he could do anything he wanted to. And the parents probably made this even because they said they just wanted some commissioners. And he'd get on the road, and he'd be going 40, 50 miles per hour just down that road. And he, he was crippled. Uh, he couldn't walk. And he'd be popping wheelies and everything on it. He almost hit a bridge. He was going so fast. We almost hit him yeah. on the tractor a couple of times. We lost so bad about that. He graduated there. high school, and so I don't know if we, we haven't noticed the thing back out. We got a lot of people out there riding bikes and walks. Boy Scout area. That's what scares me a lot because we got the Boy Scout area down there. And you got a lot of kids, and you know, they, they walk that road. <coughs> and uh, the other road on the north side ain't so bad because you can see, you know, the, the, the view on the South side, you got a lot of curves, and that's the only thing. But it's getting it's getting better. They don't drive on the grass much anymore. We don't have to move quite a bit. And like I said, there's a few. Did we ever get water tests back from? I never. I we tried, tried to get a hold of him, and I never did get a hold of him. That guy that complained back. to you on the fish, mm -hmm. he um. 
They called him back and said it was okay. Yeah, it was in the absent paper. She didn't get a hold of them down there at the lake. And uh, it, she had, they had written up an article in the paper where he, he told her that it was all right. It was just a winter kill that uh, Banner Creek had over 500 fish mm -hmm. that had died from the winter. The early ice and everything caught them, I guess, all dark or something. Okay, so it wasn't anything. Mm -mm. No, yeah. no, it, it was just a, the shock of the fish. Yeah, okay. we haven't seen any other fish. So. Because we didn't have a, a bad winter. It was, you know, good, then it just got frozen hard. And then when it thawed out, it just shocked in too quick. With the lake being as shallow it is, they yeah. don't have much to get down with it's not so cold. And did you want us to see somebody about making a, a stand, you know, uh, oh, for the to make the rules? Yeah, for the come in the entrance or whatever you want to call. For the yeah, just yeah. We don't have any place to, to, post, the to post them at all. Wes, have you seen? Do you know of anybody that in the past would either like a little enclosed <coughs> outdoor?
definitely the main entrance. Yeah, and along the west side. Yeah. yeah. East side. East side's the main entrance. Too. Yeah. East side. East side. Yeah, I mean, you got two main entrances to the way. Yeah, but all of our postings are on the east. Be close to the, the, the house. Mm -hmm. uh, Who do you have over on the west entrance? 310th and the west entrance. The west entrance is getting a lot over there by the house. Yeah. Well, but then there used to be in the past stuff close to the east entrance where you are. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the main postings are right now. I mean, that's where we have a big. It's on the east. Yeah, it's on, the, it's on that east, the east that you think your city comes into at least. See what you're talking about. Yeah. I'll yeah. see what we go talking about. Oh, yeah. Then you see the very expensive. Probably one of the closest things that we've seen then. So I don't see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'll just research and get back with you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I wonder if we try to cycle, cycle people out. Uh, we've got people that have been with us since we opened up in session. What? <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you guys come from the courtroom? We we've, we've been everywhere. Uh, we haven't been to the courtroom yet. We've been everywhere downstairs, all off the downstairs. Yeah. There is down the wall portion. That's what we were going to go, but that's their they're booked up right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so why don't you? Uh, I'm gonna have this have you go with with West Paul Westlander. Um, you might check with the court. They might have. I'm gonna start going deep. Or sure. Yeah, might start going through. So, yeah. <laughs>
This is our guy down for Pat Henderson. Mm -hmm. By the way, Pat advises the commission on legal matters. Pat also has double duty. He's also the uh, assistant county attorney, currently getting uh, all juvenile cases. So be good. Mm -hmm. There's a, I, I had a few photographs, aerial photographs, printed for you, but I think they're all the same. This is a road that's about a mile long in Mount Pleasant Township, which is just, on, just outside Cummings, Kansas. Um, I remember when they built the new bridge 10 years ago, they used this bridge. On 238 Road, uh, as the detour, the bridge on 238 Road now is in the neighborhood itself. And so I think the, the plan is to uh, not repair that bridge, but to divert traffic on the North Road uh, there. So uh, I prepare a resolution that does that. Uh, it does not close the bridge. And it will take, uh, separate action that doesn't need to be published. Um, and, uh, so for your consideration, I have some questions you might have.
or your Sunday to... I have not seen it also in this image, but it's a pretty good. Looks good. I have had a discussion again with one individual that we were talking about. He's since been hired by Omaha, the city of Omaha. So he's no longer in the picture, but I told him that we would be contacting him about further exploring the possibility of sharing an appraisal. So I told him that Mr. Henderson would be contacted and he would send me the letters. The changes are really pretty simple. Uh, the first one under rights of duty is just has to be the one that's given in itself. So it's the same as the first agreement, which is that change. Uh, under paragraph 9, under rights of duty, it says it's made clear. Uh, I don't think it's, I think it only came up maybe once, and I was transporting uh, prisoners to and from the uh, hospital. The agreement only said transporting to, they transported to and from when it happened before without incident, but just to be clear. And then also cleared up about how to count the prisoners, that uh, they would still be in charge for how to count the prisoners, and change the definition of that slide. And paragraph 10 would be the same thing, except for super village instead of with the, uh, with the jail. And uh, on the second page, the paragraph 1 under levy budget and compensation section. Uh, just have the, uh, the 2006, or 2016 and 2017 component. And then the, the paragraph that follows that is changed to make clear that, that the county provides the, uh, the law and care and so on. And we've been doing that just as the last thing. And then the rest of the same change. Uh, the agreement does still have the, uh, uh, the ability for the county uh, to, to cancel on the employee's notice. Uh, that's unchanged from the earlier drafts. Uh, 
Hey, hey, hey. Uh, yeah. Let's get more of these things. Let's get Yeah, but I didn't know you were
I tried to read them last night. Just look at that other letter about it. See if it's all the way through levels up here. There's no other corrections that entertain the motion to approve the minutes for Tuesday, March 17th.
but I'm new to this. I don't know how hard you push them, like on um, take more off the ambulance if you think it's too expensive, or you know, safety equipment. You, you don't want to skimp on. I mean, there's other places I'd probably feel like I'd rather skimp than on an ambulance. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what we're raising this talk before you was on the board here. We was talking like one sixty-five, something like that. Yeah. That. But we didn't do the safety, and you know, we just throw that under there. We thought we'd be comfortable with it. Or you take the life and next thing that him, that's ten thousand. You know, you're not talking that much. I like to keep the safety features intact. Plus, we know that box just the way that we're our rotation of, of those vehicles. Yeah, so that that box is still in shape. I mean, you heard them. I think they said twenty-year warranty on the box itself. Yeah, it was the box has a higher warranty than the chassis, so we probably be able to take. When we replace that, take that box off of that and, and re refurbish it. Yeah, if it wasn't for that, right. I would I'd say that's way too much. But I'm looking at it for mm -hmm. 20 year investment instead of 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, even though it will be a major upgrade at some point. Yeah, plus well, that chassis, and yeah, they won't survive the, probably the 20 years. Well, how do we go about taking an action? I think that heart monitors, the fact that they, on the heart monitors, they work for good. This is yeah. good they gave us so much more than what I thought the old ones would be worth there. They originally thought about $10,000 for two. Yeah, I'd be correct. So $14,000 for both of them. Yeah, that's no brainer. I think they got to reduce a little bit of the price, too, I believe, besides the trade in. Is that right? Yeah. That's the way I remember it, but I don't, I'm not seeing it here on my papers. I think it was originally about 62 for the long picture.
They did talk about the go ahead and look and see um, if this current company would be interested in purchasing our old ambulance. There's no guarantees on it. I mean, it's not in very good shape. I mean, we get a couple of a few thousand dollars out of it. We end up having to dispose of it on our own, like a purple wave or something like that. When are we going to act on these same time separately? Or? Um, we can we can act on them uh, um, either, way, either way. We can do it separately or we can um, do it together. Let's say, um, let's say we do it separately just the way we have them all set up. So we need a motion to accept the first the two heart monitors. Mr. Chairman, I still need to accept the two heart monitors. Yeah. Wow. So, and so this medic 
before had barely been used, so the miles are accumulating, once we got those two new um, uh, amuses in, into circulation, they've been putting a lot more miles on them. Because this one um, is not in very good shape. I mean, I think these litters have jump started into, they rarely use it. Setting obsolete and make is it make one? Is that the one? It's the orange or blue one, the original one that we had? Um, it's had a, a six liter diesel engine. You know, we've had a lot of mechanical issues with it. it it's working pretty good now. Because we go, that's just kind of standby. Yeah, yeah. We use that. Uh, they use two new ones for primary right now, but um, the other one is we'll go through stretches of no problems and then we'll have issues with it. And then, so. I was looking online trying to look at prices and I never did see, I never did come up with anything from Portland, but the cheapest thing you can find as a new ambulance would be like 135000 and that just looked like a tin can, you know. And you could just look at it, and, you know. So I'm figuring we're getting you know, if these guys are recommending it, it's not going to be anything cheap or well, the equipment goes inside, you know, you want that accurate. And I know I don't know what these are in. Right. So we're just kind of taking their report. So <coughs> 40, 45,000 more, well, not even that. 40. Yeah, 40,000 more. And I would think it would go a long ways. The fact that we're willing to purchase that would keep them satisfied, too. I mean, as far as dealing with them. You know, well, this will be the most expensive animal mean, because the uh, medic one, um, that, that, that's the only one left after this to replace. Its box is in really good shape too, so that will be somewhere in our first two where we just were able to take the box and refurbish the box and put on a new chassis. So. Yeah, we talked before you got here, before we got on this. When we refurbished it, the next day, I'm just going to have to be a new one. So, Pat, if you were just going to be reviewed, it looks like the Amos extension agreement looks pretty straightforward. Well, on the ambulance itself, weren't there a few proposals? Correct. So, which, which one? I know this is the proposal from last week, the video, so this one with this time yeah, 119? Correct. That, that's the newer updated one. So, how much was it? 
say that this has to be, I mean, can we run late if it came down to that? I mean, I think we can get down by the middle to the end of June, mm -hmm. but what happens if we don't pass it? Well, I mean, there's key things that need, I mean, there's key rooms that need to be um, in, in play, and I think we can probably, Jim has indicated that he can work with us or, or uh, relocate while they're um, working on his current old office, but um, I would say um, the, the first piece is, is to get, um, start getting on, going on space down on the lowest level, uh, getting his his future office space, get that going, and then um, Jim said he could relocate or, you know, he could move it temporarily somewhere else while um, we get going on his office. Um, so I did talk with Jane Mass, and she had me come down after after commission meeting and, and looking at the space, I spoke with Roger be here today to ask some questions. So Roger, his plans when he drafted up the HR office going into Jim's space, he drew it up with, I think maybe one or two filing cabinets. Um, they currently have like four. Um, part of it, and they have to keep some of those documents for at least three years, um, typically, um, some less. So their concern is, is about the tightness of space for them, for two people with their desk and four filing cabinets in where Jim's space is. I wouldn't think that that would be too big an issue because right now they've got that big desk or something that's not even that they're not using when you walk in the door. That yeah, that would not go. That would yeah, not go well, I mean that's a big, and they're not that pressed into where they're at right now, so I can't see where there would be any problem getting a couple more filing cabinets. I, I, she brought it up. I mean, I have trouble visually seeing it, but it did. If you go in that office, it does look a little tighter um, than what you think in Jim's office for, for their desks and, and two people. Uh, I believe she's talked with, um, uh, she had a discussion with Shia Nellon, who works for the, the DMV office. I think they are, uh, they've looked even at Jim's office space. They wouldn't have a problem with possibly moving, so one of our original plans was HR going to the uh, <coughs> the office space where the motor vehicles is. Motor vehicle goes into Jim Lampy's office. We still go into the HR office and the Jim Lampy's office. Yeah. Is it worth moving the HR for people out of where they're at now for three bucks here? Wouldn't it be simple if I just move the commissioners for the motor vehicle and the motor vehicle to Jim is? We have less movement and we can be subject. Two layouts mm -hmm. for them in that room. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Why is he there? Yeah, he just fell there. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Did you mm -hmm. shoot mm -hmm. him? Thank you. 
laying the carpet because it's going to be seen at the threshold. Uh, but that's not the. Uh, yeah, we can. <laughs> you know, there's just looking at the rooms. I mean, you know, some of it, you know, is cosmetic, but I don't think we're talking about. You know, maybe the only thing that would probably be. Um, well, it's quite a little bit just move one office to another. I mean, that's a lot of work in several days. To sure. To, because you got to do it a little here and a little there to be you know, accommodated. So yeah. I'm just saying, if you add all that together, then, then what we normally do, then I may run past June. So I don't want to do that unless you're aware of the fact that you I mean, fortunately, a lot of people can start early in the morning for the same thing in the courthouse, and no one's bothering us, and we get a lot of time here. And they were drawing on the things, especially with all the moving that's going on. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, in here, I'm not sure what all uh, I'm going to be involved in either. I know we're running some ground wires, but I'm going to get that done before we start up here. The other question I have uh, can we start tearing that room out? Let's say. I uh, mean, down the lower Holmes closet. Yeah, absolutely. Very much. Has that been vacated? The closet been vacated yet? Or? Yes. yes. It uh, could be, but there would be a, a place there where there would be no carpet. And, but, I mean, it shouldn't hurt anything. But the more we do now, the less I can do. And what can we yeah. clean out? We also, when we're down, there's going to be some stuff that needs to be moved it moved completely out. Uh, we've got some old antique furniture. We've also got some stuff that's not antique. I talked to Pauline about the, I don't know what you want to call it, divider where it's drawers and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And she doesn't feel I don't feel that it's historic because the wood is made out of it. It's not part of the original building. Which one is that? That's that one we're using for a partition right now. Oh all yeah. well, the drawers, it's about yeah, yeah. 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 dark wood. That's not I don't believe it to be historic and I, I think we should get rid of it. Uh, uh, how to get rid of it? I've got a sledgehammer or you want to try to Get somebody to buy it? I would think it's price. I get the price you can make money, something like that. Even if put it on Craigslist, you give them away. I mean, as long as, especially if you come and take it. Now, if we have to move it, in my, my opinion, you're putting people at risk of hurting yourself more than the value of it is. Yeah, right. So if somebody wants to buy it as is, where it is, that would be, or take it, whatever. But if we take it out, I'd just soon take it out pieces of it. Somebody get hurt. Mm -hmm. I'd say for time's sake, take it out because it's an angle for $10. Okay. That'd okay. be done with the number one and all the weight matches, weight for the sell of that. It's been in the basement, I, I know, from what I've been told over 20 years. Yeah. It just looks old. I, I don't know what the age of it is. I'm not a now furniture the top, expert. But the top piece comes off. There's about that much of the top that okay. slips. something was of use to it and I guess, you know, on the other hand, it's just another move for something that you're not going to use, you put it out like the old recycling place or something like that. And I don't think it's worth the risk of cleaning it so much. Yeah. So that thing weighs 300 pounds and weighs pounds and it has to be sure that it's fine. Because <coughs> we have a hard time just moving it from the wall out there. What else is down there? There's some equipment that's just not been used for. Pauline's got a computer or something you guys brought down that one day. Some printer that has been used in I don't know how many years. And I think she's going to shove it over into the her ballot or election thing on the south side. Yes. Uh, there's some chairs down there that one is supposedly from the state uh, Supreme Court.
mean, I think we need to look into whether we even want it in there or not. Or we just test or pay or something like that. Right. Well, yeah. Unless we put the walls in, I don't think the doors are installed enough to bring it out. I don't think. Oh, uh, okay. okay. That's what you're saying. Once it's made in there, it may be there. Because mm -hmm. the it may have to be a shorter door than the standard door because there's pipe across there. Yeah, so. And then the books, it's my understanding they're going somewhere. <laughs> they're going somewhere. And then the south book. Can Not the thing before. It's Aaron. It's Aaron. Yeah, they would say he's going to be fine. No. <laughs> my assumption is we're going to get some projects are probably going to start here. I mean, we're almost to April. I mean, we're going to start seeing some action going on in April. I mean, that'd be kind of I think that'd be the first thing you have to do is clean out what's down there. I mean, clean out that closet. What's, what's the plan? Do I ask like, what the plan is? Well, uh, Jeffy actually thinks that those books could be sold. Yeah. If 
we just had in the basement some Saturday morning advertising. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. Why don't we just yeah. do something like that? Why don't we just have like an auction auction off? So that would probably be the most sensible. I don't know if I could even an auctioneer to do either. I mean, somebody just stood there and took bids. Well, there's, there's liability on auctioneers. Uh, you know, you're getting covered by your bonded or yeah, I, I think when you hire that, then it's kind of out of house. So if there's any impropriety, I mean, it's more. If we try to rent it ourselves, then you're going to have people say, "Well, he took these bid enough." Yeah, and somebody come in because it's not about what little money's coming in. It's just about getting rid of the stuff. Right. That's all I'm looking for. Just get rid of it however, without being a big thing because. That one thing, I mean, I, somebody got ten dollars out of it. I just don't think you want the public, you know, also you may have fifty, hundred people down there. I just, you know, I don't know how you would handle that. Public building. Yeah, but it's. Um, See, too bad there isn't like if there's a household option, like at the armory or something there, that we could be put on, advertised, hold up there, and just, you know, a lot of times there, there's other several consigners on on an auction. The new seal bids. Uh, we could. Yeah, I know the sheriff sold some stuff that way a long time ago. John, mm -hmm. he sold some. He advertised as like knives or stuff, more army knives that they had seized from stuff like that. Now, what could be, what would be the time frame on that if you put that out? Would that be a month? I mean, you'd have to advertise it what, a couple times and inventory, I mean, you might be still a month away before you can get rid of it. Yeah. Well, there is a, but there is a, Kansas auction is about that. They, they have some sign of auctions listed. So, I mean, everything we have down there, I don't think it's $100. So. That's what my thing is. Yeah. You can't hire an auctioneer who wouldn't even want to do it. Right. It's well, if we throw it on somebody else's consignment auction, I guess you can take pictures of it, but then... I think the consignment auction sounds like the best deal because you can you go to the next one. I mean, you took it. So you have to take your old stuff to the consignment auction? Yeah, you yeah. yeah. Which you will make enough to pay for that person or person's hourly wage. Exactly. There will be 15 or 20 percent, 15 or 20 percent, nothing, still nothing. Well, that's true. You, you want to just dispose of it, then it's fine too. Do you see your garage still? Well, I think you can. I think if you, as, as long as you. Uh, We've got authority to dispose of property, how you could. Yeah. Uh, county employees, I don't think you buy if you did a, uh, a garage sale type of thing. Can or can't? Well, I wouldn't think so. At least not the people that are setting the prices. Correct. I, I just don't know if it passes the, the smell. The mm -hmm. smell as, uh, Correct. It'd be good to if we've got stuff to clean out. I mean, if we've got stuff that we aren't using. So if it's just occupying space, it's not doing us any good. It'd be time to get rid of it. Of course, I don't think it'd be probably much, but would we put it out to the department heads if we were? We're cleaning house. Is there anything you would like to add on to and clean out <coughs> in the rest of the course? Would that be feasible? I mean, if we were going to go ahead with it, I don't we know just, if we're going to do that. We just tried to give away, <coughs> excuse me, some file cabinets and we finally gave away the last one. So it's not a, those aren't something that anybody would want. I don't know about that. Well, the person I think would be mad if I want that partition, but I can't see what he would do. I could ask him. Well, if nobody wants them, then why don't we just dispose of them? Metal filing cabinets. Just, I mean, do we do the auction, or we just going to do like a, a sale or recycle? <laughs> I'm talking yeah. about dispose. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's just as close for me to grab a lot of it as it would be to the dump. I mean, sure. Well, if I got to haul it out anyway, but that, that one piece, I want to tear it out pieces unless somebody's going to buy it as it's worth it. Yeah. I know. I don't know. Well, yeah. It doesn't make real man any different. I can mean, call them and ask them if they'd be willing to take a picture of the item and write the measurements on it and see if they could auction it. Can they do that? Can a public auction?
What do we think the table's worth? Uh, can we sell that table? Well, why not? I think that table's old. I think it may have been with the building originally. The big table. Yeah, but I think historical rules apply to the structure. I don't think they apply to furniture and side to do that. I've never well, dealt with it other than what I've heard. I've never heard it directly. thinking that Jamie said that that counter and HR room there, they couldn't be taken out because it was part of it. Now, that isn't built in, is it? No. No, it's out of the... See, that would be something else that could go on if it, if it don't need to be in here because that's going to be in the way. Mm -hmm. I was told the best I had uh, that it was part of the original courthouse to own the blueprints that I can never dispose of that. But if I get the bad weather, I have to bring it back to the courthouse. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've been told. Mm -hmm. All I know is it's all going to be right in the way when I start bringing them over and stuff. Correct, correct. We need to get cleaned up. Well, I can work around the file cabinet. It's okay if I go ahead and destroy the uh, partition thing. I call it out and destroy the uh, closet that's there. Demolition and call it for that. Yes. And then the rest of it I can work around until we can figure out what we want to do with it. Yeah. Um, we need to, since we, we are doing specs on the uh, on what we're dealing with, we're going to need to get some quotes from which is one of the contractors on doing the work. I said because we're going to do it in house. Yeah, that's what you're going to Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was asking if we had to be done at a certain day in June or if we ran into July, then you said it would be okay. Because so. okay. my concern is all this other stuff that's going on, this is going to be cutting into my time. Sure. Right. I would find out what we cannot get rid of, move it to one of the cave things, and what we can get rid of, take it over to the auction or whatever brings the brains and what's pure junk. Just leave it set. Don't worry about getting it out of it. Carry it out and get it out of it. We should send notice. Uh, I think we should send notice to all offices that we are dispersing as we get to purge and disperse of any obsolete or unnecessary. Yeah, they may want to get rid of Correct. Uh, now we, we probably need to all get on the same page as far as what we're doing as far as the spaces and, and what's going on with those. Um, so we've got downstairs, that's all that I think that's pretty I think we're pretty self explanatory but I think that's that's pretty easy. What about the other offices where the commission room's going and uh, Lampy's office and, and Michelle's space. Well, we know Lampy's office is going downstairs in that Correct. So it'll either Motor be. Motor vehicle's going to go in there. Hmm? Motor vehicle or HR. Yeah, correct. So I guess we haven't decided fully yet which we're, we're more going to, and it doesn't make correct. any difference, really. I could care less either. I just, I just think we all need to be on the same page so we can know. I received my I don't think it's worth moving HR out of what we're at to be three seats. The other thing is that, that is probably the most easily accessible room for a commission room when you come to the courthouse. It's closest to the door, but I mean it ends it's two doors. Yeah. Well then you're gonna close one as well. Yeah. Yeah, eventually. Then then you're right next to the main main door. It's definitely the biggest space. It would be slightly larger, but... What about... The only thing that worries me is cooling. Um, we've always, obviously got heat with radiators, but cooling system for for these off, for, for some of these offices on that side. What are we going to do with that? Well, I assume they work now, don't they? I mean, you got window units here, you'll be able to if, if your commission room is in with the HRS, you're going to run the air con conditioner while we're doing a commission meeting. I think like loud is. Have you ever been in there when they ran it? Mm -hmm. Pretty loud. They're all loud. That's the reason why yeah. we got rid of them. Uh, and I did get a price that was twenty some thousand 
two of them have split units that go outside the, uh, the treasurer and the clerk? Yes. The driver's license office, which is where the commission room used to be, uh, has a window there. So it would be, no matter which room we go in, we'd have the same problem. Correct. Now you can put a split unit in that side much cheaper than you can run it across. It would probably be about half the price. Uh, but at some point, we're going to have to address at some point anyways, you know that. I mean, it's just we've got an unfunctional cooling system in our entire courthouse. I mean, but we can't, you know, you're not doing it all at once, you're just doing these are a piecemeal answer. I mean, to actually do it right, it's like uh, three quarters of a million dollars to heat the air conditioned courthouse. And that would be one big unit out here with all the lines tapped off and that's the whole building. So, mm -hmm. and that would also be a cooling tower and a whole bunch of other things. I mean, that's a lot of money, but we've had it priced before. So, I mean, the big thing in this courthouse is, is all the walls are. They were just concerned about the space down the, in, in uh, Lampy's office. That, that's the only thing that, that they really need. It would probably be the cheaper end for us going into the driver's license because moving HR with their computer <coughs> and everything would be, wouldn't that be higher than what little the driver's license dealers got? Wouldn't there just, didn't the HR, didn't they just put their server in the vault and all of that? That's thing? not theirs. That's that's that, that's the courthouse. I mean, that wouldn't be affected. That w oh, that was the whole courthouse. That yeah, that's not that's 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 not affected at all. Okay, that would stay in there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, we are moving. Anyway. Okay, I was thinking that would have to go too. I like the HR office. I think it's the biggest space, the most accessible. That's good to hear that they're doing it in town, so I'm glad to hear that. I thought when you said he couldn't do it, I don't know what that is. 
Well, that I was surprised. I was, I was shocked too. Is the driver's license office that's bigger than my piece? I mean, the HR okay. would be interested in going there. It has to. It, it's a lot bigger than than Jim's. Okay, so I walked into Jim's. I was thinking that it was maybe approximately the same size. But it seemed bigger. I think the DMV has got to be well, bigger than Lamp. That one's not too bad. That one you don't have to do a full lot. That yeah, one's Jim's is more clear and more large vehicles. I will say, uh, if you look at, if you go down in there and if you look at DMV, you look at uh, Jim's office, and if you look at, at um, well, Michelle's little space, that carpet is in pretty bad shape. I mean, yeah, I'd say we might have carpet. I think you do carpet tiles. Carpet tiles are pretty highly functional, and those are pretty expensive to fix. But, yeah. And then if you get to the same, for all, you know, all three, you're saving a lot of, I don't know what they'll put for Jim's office downstairs, but so you can put the same thing down there. Maybe it would be yeah. inexpensive and fast. That's just what I would suggest. There's some ceiling, uh, what do you call it, the drop-down ceiling panels. Those are, there's something that have to be replaced and some of the lights, but it's, it's not in all of them. So, I mean, it's, those are pretty inexpensive. The, the the cooling system is the one that I always kind of worry about because that's the first I've heard about that. I knew that was a, that was going to be an issue from the beginning because he he went and looked at doing a different system well, almost at a year ago. What he was talking about because Joe when he came to us was like I thought it was closer to a million dollars they had on that whole that big system he was talking about but at the time we didn't really even entertain it. Start looking at what if we just do portions of the courthouse at a time? So that was anticipated, regardless of the move or not. That they were. He was going to replace it, regardless of it. It's going to have something's got to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, something's got to be done long term because you know then we got a whole other issue with windows that we're going to have to address. One of those, I don't know if you saw it. One of those windows that opened up in the courtroom. It was like bowing out. It was not in very good shape. I'm surprised the glass is still holding in there, to be honest with you. I kind of went like that wrong chest a little bit. And everybody had it opened up a little bit. I opened up just a little The window is another big issue that we got coming on, too. When do we need to make up our mind on that? I mean, probably shouldn't by now, or just do we have. Well, I think Joe should get, the, you know, we're going to have to do something on the cooling system. I think he should get quotes and see what, I don't know if that 20000 if he's talking to one person or get quotes on it. I think all you can do is at least get some quotes, some hard quotes from three or four different heating and cooling system companies and see what they suggest. Maybe they're thinking of something he isn't. Like I've seen them the advertising their Mitsubishi, their room, like an individual cooler for each room. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that would be not feasible. I don't know. know if they have outside units. I don't know exactly how they work, but I don't know. I know there are Mitsubishi's, the name, uh, Manka. I think we just tell Joe to get three or four heat cooling companies come in and take a look and see what they suggest. That would give us an idea of what we're looking at. Yeah, we, we're clueless until, until we know. Yeah. But uh, what I was getting at is on what room we would go in, with how long do we have before we make up that our mind on that? We want to know pretty quick, I would assume, because we're going to, once it starts going. Jim had indicated that he could get out of his, he could come out of his room earlier, than, just so we can get, you know, because they're going to tear that stuff out so we can, as we get going. That's the only, that's the only time crunch that I worry about, like, because Joe was talking about them getting um, busy. That was the only time, that was the only thing I got worried about was would there be a time crunch with them doing all that stuff. I have to think about that and some of that stuff in hell. Uh, demoing and stuff like that, some of it like triple, they can obviously handle, but I gotta worry about the time issue with how fast can they go through.
downstairs? She said something about 11.30. So this is Ash. Uh, I don't think it starts here. But we can head down. So I entertain a motion to recess until 1.10. That should give us enough time, I'm assuming. I shall do it. All set. All in favor, signify saying aye. Aye. I think the only thing we had this afternoon was like, yeah, it was one of the executive session of the meeting. I'm not sure what's going on.
I was told that's what they're going to be told. Everybody will get the same thing. Did you follow? <laughs> yeah, pretty sure they're going to fly. Yeah. Interesting. So. Is there good enough chemical people asking for it the last few days? Um, kind of like a week ago, there was quite a bit of support on filming to put a lot on. There was nice, but this week was not being quite as nice. I haven't sold it a lot, so. They're just getting ready for it, then. I got the first round of the chemical in last week. I don't remember what day that was.
she said it's more than likely that that could occur in a much shorter time period. And she shot two weeks to me. I know from working with her through the city, oftentimes it's done in a few days. The other avenue is that if we went for tax credits, uh, essentially the minimum price is $5,000. You get 25% tax credit. Uh, that approval will take longer if you want to do that. And there's a $200 application fee, uh, which in this case, the best you're going to hope for, let's, let's anticipate that we had a $10,000 job. You would be able to get $2,500 in tax credit, uh, and it would cost <coughs> $200 to get those. And you don't use those anyway, so you're going to have to sell those. And so you're going to have expenses associated with those, and then you're going to have to consider what the value of those credit cards is and why else. Um, I'm going to suggest it's a small enough job that unless someone else here has another idea, it's probably more trouble than before. Yeah, the uh, first thing is the uh, estimated project total. We have talked with uh, Joe Bowen this morning. The only thing that sounds like it might be slightly in question is the uh, is the cooling system, um, which uh, would so much affect this office, but it would probably affect the offices upstairs, at least on the north side of the courthouse, that would probably exceed the $10,000 project. I'm not sure what that amount would be. I don't have any of those in this project. Correct. It mentioned 12000 for the south side and 22000 <coughs> Yeah, I know this uh, an estimate of, of 20, at least 20,000 on the north side. Well, let me let me suggest this. Mm -hmm. um, the information is all here. It's all back from the architect. And if Joe would like to handle this, I would be more than happy to turn all of this information over to him, and he can proceed with uh, uh, wrapping the package up however he'd like. There is a certain uncomfortable feeling on my part when I'm working with something like this and when I call the Kansas State Society uh, that they tell me that other people from the county have already called and discussed the project with them. It puts me at a disadvantage in dealing that way, if you can understand. Because I'm calling to explain my position and they're already thinking something else. Um, so I would be more than happy uh, to wrap all this stuff up give it to anyone else to do. If, if they want me to submit it to, uh, to Katrina, I'd be happy to do that. I ask the architect to go ahead and make the submittal to the state fire marshal. Um, your next step is going to be to get contractors in, and it's important that whoever is showing those contractors through that, that they get a consistent discovery on electrical plumbing and what all is there and what it's going to take to get it done. Two weeks ago, Joe said he didn't have time today. Now he says he's planning on it. Yeah. Okay. That'd be uh, wonderful. Yeah. Which surprised us. Uh, Joe did indicate this morning there it's, it is okay to proceed with tearing out of the, the closet area. I mean, there isn't a problem with that. I mean, before any of this is submitted or anything. You know what? It's a historic structure on the register that you previously got money for. I would feel much more comfortable. If we submit to Katrina and then just then we can talk intelligently with her about it because right now all she has is conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, would there be a problem with something like that for us in the meantime? I traditionally don't like altering or changing a historic structure when we've been put on notice already that that it needs its approval before we proceed. <laughs> And that's what I was told today when I called. I, I can't I can't answer right. that the way you want to answer, I, I, but I, I have I, to I say guess, yeah. I'm, I'm just asking your opinion. Now yeah. Yeah. We have basically kind of gave you. Yeah, hey, you know what? If he wants if if he wants to go ahead, he was one of the people who's already spoken with Katrina. So uh, if he's comfy with that, that's fine. I think he was going to wait until the plans got back. I don't think he'd seen the plans yet, but I think once he had the plans, I think he was going to... They're pretty simple, and them. we gave them most of the information they needed to do it. That's why it remained a very... Uh, That's what I thought he said. I thought he said, well, yeah, yeah, we get all the plans. Yeah. I almost thought that would be before, before this again. I, I can't 
can't imagine. I asked a question is after your presentation. I just wanted to. I can't imagine any of this project is going to be a problem for that. Yeah, I don't either. But you still, if you get ahead of yourself, then that can send a red flag. And and again, the people we're dealing with there, I've I've dealt with many times. You know, City of Leavenworth had a commission who oversaw and administered the state regulations on doing this, so we didn't even have to go to the state to get approved. And so I've I've dealt with them many times on it. I cannot see this being a problem. Okay. Yeah. No, I think that's good. I think we should. I think we should turn it over to uh, to Joe. He's in charge of facilities anyway. Okay. Yep. We have a trick <coughs> question or something that he can always consult you, and but I think he he would be the lead go on. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, as long as we can stick with the timeline, I, I was surprised that they said that they could do it in house. I guess that's my like my only concern is timeline. And okay. Getting everything done. Um, we had a brief discussion today. I go up to the first floor. Um, uh, just a brief discussion earlier today about Jim's office, the current Grazer's office uh, size. I, I relayed to uh, to Bill and, and Eric that um, HR was concerned slightly maybe about the space, that there's enough space for them in Jim's office. And I told him, I said, that you, had, you had drawn up like maybe a couple different space configurations. Do you, do you think it, I mean, do you think we could fit two people? Both of them in that office into into there, or we're just trying to figure out so we're all on the same page, and we're gonna make changes throughout you know throughout the process, but just being able to. You know what? The space is 14 by 14. I took that 14 by 14 space, and I think I worked out two different layouts yeah. uh, that showed how the existing furniture could fit in there. Now that existing furniture may not have had all of the file cabinets. Uh, that they currently have within it, uh, but there is somebody probably knows more than I uh, because three months ago there wasn't any furniture. Now it's grown to this, and, and I don't know exactly you know what's most important and what's not. Uh, but I think you know there were a couple of scenarios there that had those uh, the use of file cabinets, and again we're finding the same thing down in in the appraisal area is. We're keeping more stuff electronically and less stuff paper-wise these days. You know, if, if we can squeeze three or four file cabinets in there, or maybe those can even be used as a separator, fine. If they know that it just won't work, then again, I'm not trying to argue yeah. with them. All I was doing is proposing to you uh, potential scenarios based on sizes and furniture. And and again, uh, <coughs> I don't think I drew any solid conclusions other than the current desks they have that are set up would fit in there in the same manner that they're in there and many of the other elements that they have would fit there at the same time. Uh, when someone, uh, I think it was Wes, spoke to me about <coughs> putting a wall up between that and uh, between the shelf area and sure. putting up a hallway there, um, I don't know for sure, but you're going to have a door coming off of that. You're going to have two doors coming off that hallway. Uh, you're going to have ADA regulations to meet. And you might think, well, that's a small area. It wouldn't be. <coughs> My experience has been anything that you do that causes the space to be inaccessible means that you may shy from hiring a person who uh, requires those kind of things and therefore is considered not to be acceptable. Uh, I think that's the reason we just try to leave the driver's license where they were. And and what I'm telling you is you're probably going to have, and I, I just have to go back and take a look. I, I don't memorize all of those because I don't draw them every day. Uh, but you're going to have you know, doors going different directions. And, sure. and there are requirements on how much space you have to have on the strike side of the door, uh, how much you have to have on the swing side of the door. I mean, it's different depending on whether you're coming straight to it or at an angle to it, you know, or perpendicular to it. Uh, it's just there are so many different scenarios, and you just have to make sure you meet the one that you have. Does H tower have these configurations as well? I think they do. Copies. I gave copies to Neil, <laughs> but 
Western Commission. And she, um, how she showed to me, she had a copy from my email to her. <coughs> she was okay, so the HR does that? Yeah, she was concerned about this patient requirements. They do have four filing cabinets that unfortunately cannot, yes, we are doing a lot more digital now, but they still have to keep paper records for at least a year. Um, and account table alone fills up three filing cabinets. <coughs> um, it's tight. Um, the, and the way those are drawn up, she's in front of courting her assistant, which she needs to be, she needs to be the back one in the room because there's some things on the, that are on her computer that are, no one should know but her and the specific employee. So that would work out. <coughs> Not saying you couldn't change it around a little bit, but I mean, it'll be tight. It'll be real tight for them both to be in that room. And again, I didn't know the paper requirements. I'm not passing yeah. a judgment here. I mean, we're trying to digitalize as much as we can. Yeah. But right. there's a statute that says we have to keep a paper copy of this for at least a year. And the payroll records, we since got online and found out that we all need to keep payroll records that as long as we thought we need to. While we're moving, we're trying to get where the best fit for everybody yeah. is. I guess reasonably said to leave the driver's license where they were because that's more the public going in there. Yep. They wouldn't need the room, but then yep. Yep. access. You'd think HR would also be the place where they could talk confidentially with uh, employees also. Which you can't right now. Which you can't then either. Because a lot of the things that people talk to Jamie about is confidential material and the court you shouldn't yeah. be yeah. involved in. The HR director should have went and closed the door and had a meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, you would potentially have enough space in that where they are now. Where you wouldn't be able to do something like that. Yeah. Well, I don't think you could. No. If Not in there. The driver's license for a meter. Yeah. Well, that's 20 feet long. Yeah. You may be able to have a, an, an entry area as well as a office area. Yeah. Um, I, I was talking yesterday with Roger about not building a hallway that, that goes back into the, like if you were to put the D&D engine lamp and stuff, but getting that, we need to have these ventilation doors that you can mount that are temporary and you just slide them closed. And like a pocket door? Like a pocket door. Um, bar door, door type thing, almost on tracks where you can just, yeah. Yeah. But they collapse on it. So if it did get to be a problem and Michelle was getting distracted, you could just pull that closed and then she would be in her <coughs> I don't think we can change any code requirements because that's not a <coughs> wall. Yeah, yeah, I sure wouldn't think so. But uh, <coughs> that or using pocket cabinets for separators too. Or that too. I mean, just something to keep people out of her space. If you were to make that a DMV. I mean, it's completely up to you. I mean, right. Throw out options. That's what I was wondering when you were talking about strike distance and everything. I was mm -hmm. thinking pocket door. Yeah. It makes me. I don't know what they're called. Mm -hmm. It's a door that will completely fold flat and then accordion out. You know, nothing fancy and everything. Mm -hmm. But they look better than they used to. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, like we see like at hotels where they provide yeah. rooms. Yeah, conference room. Yeah, private place for that. Like, yeah, yeah. If you name a school, had some rooms that were partitioned off so they could open up and right. have two, two rooms wide. Mm -hmm. Correct. I don't know if they're still that way or not. And that wouldn't be something permanent to where you'd have to worry about ADA compliance. I, I think the cooling kind of works really well right now. But For cooling, you would have to then make this conduit that you would have to. So if you separate that room off, you make this conduit with a little fan on it that really sets it down into the ceiling tile, it would go up and over and out to her and blow down into her room. So whatever temperature Jim Lanky's office was, it would be the temperature of her room out there. We use that same setup out in the ambulance building out in Hatchetter and Effingham because the heater was on one side of the building and then you had office and bay on the other side and we had to get the heat from one side to the other. Hmm. So you just put it on a thermostat and whenever it got to a third degree, that fan would keep on the air from this side of the room to this side of the room. Fun option.
mix those. I mean, right now, something like that happens. She just has to get Courtney out. Mm-hmm. So. so what you, I don't think you could build that in this. I don't think if you had yeah, a yeah. wallet separated, I don't think you could build it. Now, if they were in this room, uh, well, like Roger said, if they were in the driver's license room, mm-hmm. there you could almost. Yeah, the third make an office that first that then could be in here. Well, yeah. Yeah, so that I'm making sure. Yeah. You're not far off of that right now. They have a counter back there about 10 feet. And so you've got an entry area with a desk, and then you've got the area behind the counter where all the people sit. You just, you, it's about divided into two spaces right now. Driver's license? In the driver's license area. Yeah, they've got a counter all the way across. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's like toward, it's towards the back of the room. Right. right. Now there's still, there's, there's still space back there. Right? Still space back there. Yeah. You'd have the same cooling problem in there, you'd have to do the same thing. Because you divide that up. The two offices there you're going to have. Isn't, isn't that by the building up this way? Not in the driver's Yeah, office. where does the central air go over there? There's a, there's a unit in the Oh, I thought the whole side of the building was this way. Could that be added on to for one more room? On that side? You have to have a separate room. Right now they have like a. Right now they have a window unit. In the driver's Does that have a drop down ceiling in that room?
if that's possible. Uh, I'll leave the sketch out and might break down and, and have this stuff in. Just like we did now. Uh, if we are putting up a partition just because of flow, you probably want to include it in your building permit when you go forward. Yes. And include it in the submittal package for. Well, I think the sooner we can get rid of that stuff, because it's going to be 
one less obstacle because we're jumping through these hoops and that, and that would be a total, another total mess. Okay. Okay. Okay, motion would be great for session. What do you think session like uh, I like the first one. I like the first one matter as uh, so 30 minutes. So we can check out roughly at uh, 10 after 2. So. Was that the motion or? I said I'd entertain a motion. I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second. Motion is second. All in favor, seen by saying aye. 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 So, the Commission, Councilor, and the Yeah. 
pain dive is. Was that throw up? I know you're not going to be around to do it uh, this it'll summer with it. No, it would just be a, a little bit more expensive, but um, I mean, it's not a big deal to get. You just call up. Um, I mean, the clean will last like another, that, the KDOT tests are showing like it, it lasts another two years, roughly, than, than other, but I mean, it makes a difference on what kind of oil you get. Yeah. You know, um, on the oil bed, it's not going to make any difference. It's going to be the same, same oil, just a different top coat. Oh, I know a little more county do on this uh advanced bid. Yeah. Um, and I mean as far as a little bit goes, except for if you had a question with the different products, that's pretty clear cut the advanced was Oh yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I think we accept the bids. Well, yeah, I don't have a problem with the bids from from Vance Brothers. You know, that that question on the that type of the the type of one or something like that. They're, they're yeah, it's just it's the one is positive to charge, one is negative to charge, and that's too getting pretty technical for me. But um, I think if we did go to strictly hate versus line, then you so. might. If, if you went strictly with hate then you would probably want to look pretty hard at the switching. Um, I know what you're saying you didn't want. To, they said something like you to clean it out, and yeah. you don't want to mix. Right. We get pretty nasty hate everywhere. Yeah. Unless you clean the disturber truck. You just clean the disturber truck. What about the tank? The whole tank. Up you above? Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't want to put, you wouldn't want to, there's enough residual in there you wouldn't want to mix it because they said it just turns into just, you know, rubber like blobs and sets up. So there's a chemical reaction there that, you know, I think we'd have to set up for that before we went through that. Yeah. Well, like you said, even if we did hate you could still use the RF, right? RS one H, yeah. yeah, right. So, yep. yeah. So we need a motion to accept those in. Yes. I'll make a motion to accept that what is this presented. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Do you want to sign it? Yeah. So where did you? The bid for from Vance Brothers. Vance Brothers. Yeah, so um, it's, a, it's a charge on a per gallon. I don't know if we have a little pull of these. No, there isn't. It's an open ended. So it's was that the RS1H? Uh, RS1H and SS1H is the two yeah. products we use. Yeah, you need plus the one plus. Okay. Is it open ended? Yeah, there's gallons. no specific amount. It's, uh, the RS1H is $1.90 per gallon. The SS1H is the dollar, also $1.90 per gallon. There's also a, there's a 7 cent uh, freight on that, so it's actually $1.90. Yeah, sorry. Okay, $1.90. Okay. Okay.
lay in pipe. What? Gosh. Oh, I thought this was not supposed to say. That's okay. It wouldn't be no secret. Do you have anything else for us? No, it's not right. It's just for me. Okay. And then you had more information on meeting. Do you want me to talk with you afterwards? Do you care? No, I can talk now. Well, I mean, just the liability. Do you want to know? If we're going to do that, we should do it with the executive session. Okay. It won't take long, I don't. Ten minutes? Sure. Turn it live or yeah. Make a motion to go to take a session for ten minutes until two thirty five. Turning client privileges with counselor and commission. I shall move the chair. Okay. All in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Then are we are we done after that or we adjourned?
have to have one of those at each site? Yeah, maybe by that time, it would be probably some, probably, you know, some combinations or putting some three things together. Well, I'm just thinking that if I had anyone left over, it would be nice to move it over to this, you know.
everybody's indicated that you're going to see a big difference in adhesion. So. Yeah, we hope to make it better for our book. Well, KDOT has been indicated. They set a training session on Monday this year. I think it was at Topeka or Lawrence. And uh, they indicated that they're seeing there's a lot of different ways. They, they have a huge study. If I forward on to you guys, they have a huge study on what they've done with different applications. So they've ever seen about two years longer. <coughs> and they, they break it down. It's like a small dollar amount per foot or per mile if they break it down to versus if you don't use stuff to preserve it, it's like astronomically, I mean it's saving you like 